Morning, everyone. It always works the second time. Um, I'm delighted to be um, opening the first panel here at Midem on the Music Business Stage. And as you know, this element of the session will be dealing with the world of brand partnerships, and you're very welcome. So, a large focus this year with regard to Midem is in this area of artist and brand partnerships. And my observation is, whilst there's a number of partnerships, as it were, or as they are positioned, there are very few collaborations. And one of the reasons we wanted to draw out this case study today is to give you an example of a genuine collaboration between an artist, brand, and agency. So this session is to look at Lexus Europe's partnership with the global entrepreneur, superstar, and innovator, that is Will I Am, to launch a new car, the Lexus NX, a premium SUV with some very striking angles. And as part of that collaboration, as we'll see today, Will I Am was closely involved in the developments of all of the elements of a genuine, multi-platformed, multi-layered, integrated campaign. So today's session is with the team who worked on and innovated that. And what I'd like to do is have the opportunity to present in the, uh, the case study. I'll be asking a few questions, and then what I will do is then throw it open to the audience for any questions and or insights you may wish to share. So my name is Cliff, uh, Cliff Flue. I'm a partner at the law firm Lewis Silkin, and I specialize in brand entertainment. And what I'd like to do now is ask each of the panelists to briefly give an intro before we head into the presentation. Dave. Thanks, Cliff. Um, I'm Dave Goulding. I'm a senior director of music um, at Platinum Rye Entertainment in London, I'm responsible for music, sports, and celebrity consultancy. Hello, I'm Malcolm Peters. I'm a partner at CHI and Partners. Uh, we're a marketing and advertising agency. And uh, uh, for this project, I, I led the accounts and creative teams to bring the project to life. Good morning. My name's Caroline Reason. I work at CAA. And we are Will I Am's um, agents. And we represented Will in this, uh, in this campaign. Morning, I'm Chris Taylor. I am responsible for brand and marketing communications for Lexus in Europe. So I'm going to throw it over to Chris now to kick things off with a presentation to tell us more about the overall context. I will then ask the panel some questions and then we will throw it open to the floor. Over to you, Chris. So, good morning again. Um, I'm delighted to be here um, to tell you what I believe is, is a really interesting story, actually. Um, and I feel privileged to actually have been a part of it. And as Cliff said, it's a story about a collaboration between the Lexus brand and the icon superstar, Will I Am. What we're going to do today is, is take you through a few things. I thought it would be important, first of all, just to give you a little introduction to the brand Lexus. Um, it's, it's relatively exclusive in Europe, and I want to tell you about that. The next thing sorry, was, we're going to do is talk about the most important launch that the brand has had for the NX car, um, which is the story of today and the one that we had the collaboration with Will on. We're going to go into the background of how we secured the collaboration um, and how we made it was important for us to make it work and then how that manifested itself in terms of the overall campaign, how that was brought to life. And finally, we'll share with you the results um, that we've had and the next steps that we've got intended for the partnership. So let's kick off a little bit about the brand Lexus. Well, for those of you who don't know, Lexus is the premium brand of Toyota Motor Corporation. And it's a relatively young brand, and basically, this brand was founded, the idea, in 1983, when you see the gentleman here, Edgy Toyota, who was the president of the Toyota Motor Corporation at that time, had the dream of making the finest luxury car in the world. And he basically decided that this should happen in the United States of America, and so teams were sent to America, talent was found in America, and the project started in 1983. And you can see here, you know, this was a serious project, 1,400 engineers 
a significant billion dollar investment. And, and the result was 300 technical innovations to the automotive industry. And the result was the delivery of our first car, the LS flagship, which came to market in 1989, six years later. And here's the TV commercial that launched that car in the US. After years of intense work, Lexus is ready to celebrate. Because even at the equivalent of 145 miles per hour, This LS400 is designed to stir the soul, and not much else. So this really set out our stall and ambition. Um, in the US, Lexus is more established as a brand um, compared to in Europe, which is basically the premium um, market home. We are at currently, we would say, an exclusive position. We don't have a huge market share, it's 2%. But um, I'll give you an interesting stat, for example. One in every eight cars on the road in Europe is a German three market. So this is your Audi, BMW, Mercedes. And one in 500 is Lexus. So there is, you know, an opportunity for us. And now we'll see, I think today, the intention is us very much to capitalize that and take on the German three. We're evolving. Um, and this is a significant business objective and much is happening. What is happening? The design of our products is really taking on a strong, um, powerful identity. We call it El Finesse. We're proving to the rest of the automotive market that we are very innovative. We brought hybrid technology to the premium market. We now have it across all our range of products through Lexus Hybrid Drive. And competitors have followed by implementing their takes on this technology. And the other attribute that we're very, very proud of, and it's very important to us, a brand pillar, is the customer experience. We pride ourselves on delivering the most outstanding experience to customers of Lexus. If you look at our range today, it's taking on a new, much more contemporary, powerful shape. Here are a few of our products. And importantly, you can see that we're starting to take our product footprint across all segments of the market, as opposed to just big sedans where we started with. Luxury is very important to us. We consider ourselves to be a luxury premium brand. And everything we do, the way we behave, has to signify that. And you can see here in our products that we do provide a very luxurious experience for our customers. We can also do super sports cars too. And this is the LFA, which um, was launched to renowned acclamation around the world not so long ago. And this is our most recent concept car, which shows the direction of where our products are going. And the thing is, we're getting noticed now by influencers and the press. So for example, here you can see the design language that we're adopting is indeed attracting attention. And importantly, it goes beyond design. We're taking on the, what are, the players who are regarded as being the best. So for example, here, BMW, at their strengths, for example, driving performance. And this, importantly, in the German market as well. So a little bit about the brand. Our brand promise is creating amazing. And this is a promise that we really take care to think about. We're delivering it in every single area, touch point of our business. We want to deliver amazing customer experiences. We want to deliver this experience throughout the customer journey, particularly with retailers, the, the touch point for consumers, and of course, in our con communications. The way this brand promise manifests itself in terms of a payoff is with the tagline, Amazing in Motion. So Lexus, amazing in 
motion. It's perpetual, it's continuous, and we'll keep on doing it. The challenge we had, I talked about our position from a volume perspective, though, is we're not yet as known as we need to be. And we do need to make sure we increase brand awareness. This is starting to happen, um, as you saw through the press and reactions to the products that we're delivering. And importantly, though, we've got to move from being a respected engineering company to a company that people have an affinity with and ultimately desire a brand. And we've discovered that music is a very important way to help gain that affinity and help engage people. Here is a statistic, I'm sorry for the chart, but it's an IPA, Institute of Practitioners of Advertising, that proves effective advertising with memorable cut through music is it's more effective and powerful than advertising that doesn't carry that. So, um, it's something we've been very mindful of and have decided from a strategic perspective to pay serious attention to with our amazing communications. And just to, to demonstrate that, what I want to do is to show you a commercial we um, made two years ago for the launch of the IS model, the Lexus IS. And the great thing about this car is the driving dynamics. It drives wonderfully. It looks great too, by the way. And why it drives dynamically and so well is because it has a strong body, a chassis. Very, very strong. And so I'll play you the commercial here uh, now and we'll see what we do. Thank you. Um, and the team here have to be take the responsibility for that um, commercial. But, you know, you can see the results here. I mean, obviously, very simple analogy. You take, for strong body, a ballerina. I mean, prima ballet, but not only a ballerina. She was, by the way, Tamara Rojo, who was the principal director of the English National Ballet. And, and you sat to demonstrate the idea quite simply, but obviously juxtapose it with a trap music track. And that in itself gives great power. And look at the results here. People not only talk about Lexus, great, great advert, great brand, but the music itself. And this, this shows the power of music in advertising. So it's something we really um, appreciate. And as I said before, strategically, it's important to us. And by the way, that commercial and campaign um, was, was successful not only, I mean, we, we've won awards with it on an effectiveness level too, which is always nice. So to the story of today, that was a little bit of background, NX. This was the most important launch for the Lexus brand. Why? Because quite simply, we were entering a new segment that was hugely popular in the market. We didn't previously compete there, so this is the midside SUV crossover segment. From a business perspective, we had significant volume objectives. By entering this segment, we, which we weren't competing in, we could get 20,000 cars a year increase. And we, we'd set ourselves a target of selling out more than four months of um, sales before the car went on sale. The great thing about this car is it opened doors to a new customer for Lexus, a younger, more aspirational customer for the brand. Um, it was, if you like, a, a new gateway from which to source business. And importantly, the product itself, taking on the design and innovation that it had, was great product to, to give brand perceptions a shift in cool areas as well. Design, innovation, and so forth. 
So given it was so important to us, we set ourselves the, you know, the simple target, this will be the best launch campaign we ever make. Ultimately, what we said is, we're going to make this car famous, and we're going to make famous communications. So the idea for the campaign, quite straightforward, but it came from the heart of the product, which was its design, which was very sharp, quite edgy, quite provocative, and, and powerful, and certainly through clinics we noticed striking. And the campaign idea was striking angles. And everything we did was set about that idea in itself. And here you can see some of the imagery. But, okay, I talked about making something famous. I've talked about the importance of music. So how do we take it to the, to the next level? So we talked about that. And ultimately, the objective was we need to amplify this campaign. So we're going to amplify this campaign with the power of music, but take it to the next level. How do we do that? We take it by choosing a global celebrity music icon. So then comes the question, who are we going to choose? Who would we like, ultimately? Because they've got to choose us, too. Um, and then you have to think strategically again, what are the criteria to make this right, to actually get the right person, hopefully, to collaborate with you? So the first thing is, fit with the campaign idea, striking angles. We wanted something that was provocative, challenging. So that was the, the area that we were talking about for this campaign. The product itself is urban, it's progressive, it's cool. So again, these were the traits, the attributes in the character that we wanted. But importantly, cool design and innovation as well. And ultimately, obviously, we're, I said we're trying to comp attract and compel an audience that we weren't previously engaging with, younger Europeans, premium market, 26 to 45 years old. So based on that, we studied, we did due diligence, obviously, who the possible contenders were. And actually, there weren't that many, frankly speaking. When it came to Will I Am, we realized he was the perfect choice. Why? I mean, not only was he a, is he a musician, he's an innovative, he's an entrepreneur. These were the, the stats um, available at the time we entered the partnership. He's got 15 million Twitter followers now, I believe. Um, but obviously, he's a global successful star. And he, but more than that, he really had the right brand fit, we felt, for Lexus. So then, once we identified him as being the person we'd love to collaborate with, we had to go through the process. So how do you do that? Um, because as I said, you know, we might want to collaborate with him, but he's also got to, it's got to be meaningful for him too. And what we did was have a two-hour face-to-face meeting with Will in London before any contract was negotiated. And this was really important, um, I think, to the whole relationship. It set the stall out, if you like. Because we, we gave the, had the opportunity to explain what was important to us, our ideas, but equally to listen to him, because he could bring, with who he is, much to this campaign. And that's what we wanted to happen. So ultimately, we wanted a win-win situation, a collaboration as opposed to an endorsement. And interestingly enough, I mean, Will, when he came to this, he, he likes Lexus. He grew up in America. America um, and... He knows Lexus quite well, where the brand is, as I said, more, more well known. And he was challenging us to make the brand closer to popular urban culture. And one of the things he talked about in the meeting was how Lexus in the US or in Iran was revered in many music songs today. And what I've got for you here, just to demonstrate that, because he was singing to this to us in our meeting, was a little mash is a little mashup we've put together of Lexus in songs recently. In the Lexus pull up like hot the hot down A Street, off white Lexus. So that's what I'ma do. Take you back to the zoo with the Lexus. Check your Lexus. I'm out in this Lexus. I'm serving, I'm swerving in the coupe. The Lexus, flexes from Long Beach to Texas. Heard about the Rolexes and the Lexus. Then I got me a Lexus. Toss the keys and loan me your car. Yeah, just a young kid in a drop top Lexus. The things you do reminds me of my Lexus cool. So, you know, Biggie Small, Jay-Z, Rihanna, 
um, Snoop Dogg, it's amazing. Uh, and, you know, so the brand is cool for them. And certainly we need to share that with other people. So this was a great challenge, you know, and set the stall out for the relationship. So then to secure the collaboration, what, as I said, just to summarize, you need to know what you want as a brand, first and foremost. And, and we were very transparent with Will about that. Um, and equally so, he was transparent and, and shared ideas of what he could bring and what was important to him. Um, there was, the, the great thing about it was if you look at Will's, what he described on his, on his website as being a multifaceted performer. And this whole multifaceted idea is very much part of his persona. And if you look at how he, his identity and his um, materials that he does, his, the, what he wears, etc., it was perfect. He had an exhibition in the Barbican, um, which by chance was using striking angles. So, of course, we could exchange collaboration and assets with things like that. So, it was really important to be clear and transparent and open to ideas. So, then the campaign kicked off after um, we had agreed everything. It started last August, on the 1st of August, where he tweeted a uh, tease. Um, that something important was coming, and then a few days later revealed that it was the collaboration with Lexus. Um, we went on television, first time in Europe last September, um, with a TV commercial which he featured in, and then on the 26th of September, or 24th, excuse me, in Paris, Fashion Week last year, we held a big press event um, where Will unveiled a bespoke customized NX that he had designed as well. We had 600 journalists, influencers, VIPs, um, and it was a great launch event, um, enabling people to understand the partnership, um, and it got us a great level of awareness as well, and I think affinity too. So now, just a quick summary of that campaign. We've put together a little film. Um, again, to share with you, um, in that also is the results that we've achieved thus far. The striking new Lexus NX. Multifaceted design with a multifaceted launch campaign. Every element influenced by the striking angles of the car. Amplified by global music icon and cutting edge innovator Will I Am to reach a new younger audience for Lexus. To announce the partnership, we created a music video inspired by NX and launched by Will I Am himself, tweeting to his 40 million followers. The TV commercial showed a striking faceted world, starring and featuring a remix from Will I Am. Shazam enabled people to access the unique music track. A high-profile PR launch event during Paris Fashion Week, headlined by Will I Am, attracted lifestyle, fashion, and celebrity press, where we unveiled a customized NX designed by Will I Am, followed by his DJ set. One-to-one -one interviews with Will I Am gave us great content, along with behind-the-scenes footage and attention-grabbing banner ads, released throughout the duration of the campaign to keep our audience engaged all of which came together to bring record-breaking results. 70% first-time visitors to Lexus websites, number one social media share of voice in the segment, bringing positive buzz to the campaign. Shazam benchmark beaten by 22%, a 39% increase in opinion that NX is a fashion-forward car for young people. A multifaceted campaign amplified by a global music icon, reaching our new audience in an innovative and groundbreaking way, with even more to come in 2015. So we basically achieved the objective of making this our best ever launch. Um, the, the car has been a great success. Um, it really is now at the heart of the brand and um, we're very pleased and proud to have done this. It was the first time we had done a collaboration like this and it was certainly proven to be a great um, decision to have made from a results perspective. And of course, you know, the important things in communications, you shouldn't just do it and then stop. No, you should take advantage and continue with it. And again, you know, being a collaboration, we're now working together with Will. Um, we're just about to go soon to produce 
a new um, project, which we, I'm absolutely convinced is going to get um, some global recognition, and that'll be coming um, your way in, in a couple of months' time. Um, again with this car, again with Will, and again we've been collaborating with him. He's been providing input into this project. It's very exciting. It's very innovative. It's, it's going to smash it, basically, we hope. Um, so that is the little story that I had to tell. Um, yeah, again, we've been very pleased to do this partnership, so I think we're now going to have some questions. Thank you. We have to start at the beginning, I suppose, and I'd like to start off with uh, Dave. I mean, what was, the, what was the first step in making something like this come to life? Um, it was somewhat of a dream brief for us, to be honest, at Platinum Rye, because the striking angles creative was such a defined idea that in terms of responding to the brief talent-wise, it was kind of clear what we needed. We needed an artist that obviously had the right musical fit for the brand, an artist that musically could go across the territories you needed them to, um, an artist that had pedigree in design, the genuine right to talk about design, um, and an artist that was into innovation and technology and passionate about those areas as well. So early on in the ideation process, Will I Am's name did seem to come up quite a lot, and it, he sort of came to the top of the pile quite early on. OK. Um, Chris, from your angle, I mean, when Dave and the guys at CHI come up with an idea like that as well. Tell us about the sort of the, the, the steps to bringing that to life, really. Um, I'm talking about right way back when, when you, you get the response of a brief like that. No, I mean, and it, it was an, it's an iterative process. So the idea came about, we, apps, I mean, obviously we consider when we make a campaign like this various ideas, but this one came to the top of the pile. It felt absolutely right and it was validated. Um, through consumer research, which we did. Um, so then, as I said, we, we, we needed to amplify it. So what we, you have to do, though, is if you're going to do something like this, you have to treat this properly, you have to work with the very best people, um, and you have to be serious about what you want to do and know, well, know what you want to do and be very serious about it. So, you know, Platinum Rise, one of the best procurement companies in the world, so you, you engage with the best people to make sure you get the best results. Our advertising agency, they came up with it, but not only that, they collaborated with all our other agencies as well. Um, and then you've got to have the dialogue as well with um, the celebrity, the, the superstar. And I think that was really, as I said before in the presentation, the defining moment as well. And the last thing I'd say is what's so important is up front, um, all the different stakeholders um, that are involved are fully informed and know what they've got to do. And so there was a job there to, to make sure that happened. OK, so on that point, Malcolm, I mean, Chris alluded to there being a number of moving parts here. Could you talk us through those different stakeholders and their relative role in the value chain and where CHI worked in terms of shepherding and making it all come together? Sure. Well, of course, uh, the main stakeholder has to be the starting point, which, it, which is Lexus, and there's a very, very clear objective, which is uh, a volume, uh, volume sales, which is to launch a brand new car to a brand new group of people, and to do it in a way that's going to have some real positive brand shifts. So, uh, so what's really important is that everybody involved in the process, be it the creatives, be it the artist, uh, be it... Uh, the, the people involved in the licensing, or uh, the media company, all the different stakeholders understand what the two clear objectives are. Because if everybody understands that, then you can start for everybody to understand the parts, parts they play within that. And then there's various little other little dynamics that go on, of course, because whether it's the artists or the creative team, they're obviously pushing to do the best creative they can do. The strategic planners involved are obviously making sure that it all fits with consumer perceptions and when they're not going off at tangents. And there's other checks and balances in place, of course, with all the commercial objectives to make sure we don't go off and just do something for entertainment purposes. It's got a commercial reality. And, and if you've got a, a steering group and it's a tight group and everyone's clear about the objectives, everyone can go off and lead their teams and they know the, the parts to play. And if I can use a music analogy, uh, it's 
a bit like an orchestra. Uh, everybody's got a different instrument. Everybody's got their own score to, to play, but actually there's one conductor and he's pulling everything together for, for, to, to do the most perfect performance that's going to get, uh, get a great reaction. And what are the key challenges in acting as a conductor? Uh, well, <laughs> so, several, but uh, one is just reminding everybody about the clear objectives along the way because it's very easy for somebody to come up with a new idea and go, oh, isn't that great, let's do it, and you can all get excited about that, but it could, it could go off at a tangent and you just always need to make sure and bring it back. And I think, I think Chris said it earlier, is... Uh, it's a collab this was definitely a collaboration and uh, we set out for it to be a collaboration uh, one of the things as a, a marketing agency we're very keen on not just putting someone in an ad and paying them to say something because it's quite an empty promise mm. so if we're going to do a collaboration it's really important that everybody listens to one another and takes on board each other's ideas and uh, and i think again from a a leadership point of view or conductor point of view uh, Chris and I and, and the others involved in that leadership team we were making sure everybody was listening to one another and taking on board the right ideas for us to make sure that they were then on brief okay thank you um, this question to Caroline um, we've heard a lot with regard to the brand's perspective and the procurement perspective but would really like to not speak for the artist but to the artist really um, now, in a number of these artists' brand partnership deals, there's an innate cynicism that it's just a badging deal or they're just going to turn up, do the odd tweet, approve the odd photo and move on. I mean, how much of this was a genuine collaboration? I mean, it's very interesting to hear about the idea of there being some time without being there, a contract being in place, which is a, in and of itself pretty innovative. But how much was it a genuine creative collaboration? It was very much so. And, and we'll... And, and all of us wouldn't come into this unless he was able to have a real kind of creative input. Um, and there's a lot of detail in this which we haven't kind of touched on so much where he was able to, to include his, his elements, whether it was the digital revolution campaign at the Barbican that, that Chris mentioned. This is an idea that he kind of brought in. Um, Lexus not only supported his own installation in that, but also ended up supporting the, the entire installation at the whole, throughout the whole of last summer. Um, some of the other kind of, kind of small details was that a lot of the imagery and the graphics from the installation were actually used within the campaign. Um, also the music from that was, was, the, was the starting bed for the music for the content and, and the TV advert. Um, it, it had to be to him a a collaboration and, and the brand was such a natural fit for him. He didn't need convincing. It was what something that he'd grown up with. There was no, it, it was just a, a perfect fit really. Um, it so, was a no brainer for him. So, so in that context, it'd be helpful if you just spend, you know, you work with a number of artists. What are mm -hmm. their key concerns in doing a deal like this? Is it the credibility? Yeah, it is. It's, it's, sometimes it's profile um, as well. I mean, that always has to be taken in consideration. It's a great positioning. Um, but for him, the brand was a natural fit. It gave him some creative input within the campaign as well. Um, and it was a long term. It's European wide. It's 18 months to two year campaign. It's, it's, it's a strong positioning as well. And Chris, just to pick up a point, you said that the first time that Lexus had done anything of this scale, but first time you'd worked with a collaborator or a creative, as a sort of external creative director in that way, is that, would it be right to say that? Yeah, indeed, in, as a collaboration, I think that we've obviously sponsored things previously, but from a brand partnership, a brand collaboration, yes, it was new ground for us, and um, yeah, frankly speaking, it's always going to be a learning, a learning curve as well, and it was, and... In that regard, I mean, it really, it's, it's taught us some things and given us, you know, clear indicators on strategic intentions moving forward because, you know, we, we pride ourselves on continually improving whatever we do. And we managed to do this. I said this was the best ever campaign that we've done. You know, we're now thinking of the next one and taking the learnings from this to um, leverage those in a positive way on what we do moving forward. But. Um, the first time, yes, and, you know, really, really we're convinced that it was um, a wonderful experience. And, I mean, I have the job of having to go to 
sort of quite high, high level financial officers and chiefs and persuade them that if I can um, get you to sign on this paper, the partnership with Will I Am, we will sell this many more cars, which isn't easy sometimes, frankly speaking. <coughs> Um, but what we've done is, I mean, we've got a case history here, a story to tell with these results that are proven. And so I can tell you this, I've obviously gone back to them and showed them the results of the um, project. And I mean, this makes them good because feel good because they've signed it off in the first place, to be honest. But what's you know, great is I think it helps convince people moving forward, taking strategies and decisions like this. You know, it's much more contemporary, it's much more modern. Um, and from the brand objectives perspective, you know, it really does move the needle. And that's what we're trying to do, as I said before. Um, to Dave, I mean, you, we saw the, um, the slide which talked about the effect of music in a campaign generally, as it were, giving that sort of level of uplift. Tell us about sort of the concrete win about getting it right. I mean, am I right <coughs> that you were involved in the ballerina campaign as well? That's right. And I think that um, Lexus Stewart really understands how to use music to build value for your brand. It's not just about having sporadic, random pieces of music that go on all your different forms of communication. So your TV campaign's got something on. The next ad you do is completely different and it's classical. The next ad you do is hip hop. It has to be a consistency across all your communications and music has to be a key part of your marketing DNA. And this is something we've been working on for about two years. And so it was kind of a culmination of that strategy. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Please do. Just uh, picking up what, what Dave just said, uh, what was really interesting for us uh, as an agency working with some of the challenges that uh, Lexus was facing in Europe, you know, Chris showed you that uh, the very first ad in America, and, and it's fair to say if people have any perceptions or uh, up to a couple of years ago had any perceptions of Lexus, it was making really, really excellent uh, executive cars and when you see their new product lineup which are much sportier sleeker to take on uh, the uh, the Audis and BMWs of this world we needed to do something surprising and it would have been very easy on that ballerina ad to think oh we're a premium brand we should put some lovely classical music over it uh, and, and likewise oh let's find a very uh, very uh, premium person that fits in with the uh, Lexus brand and uh, doesn't want to provoke any kind of response with, with NX. And, and if you do that, you would, one, become invisible and not surprise anyone. So for us to, to actually uh, have uh, some very premium imagery, but with some very, very surprising edgy music, and likewise taking an innovator and creative uh, like, like Will, uh, that, that's very in tune with the brand, but equally pushes us into kind of more modern territory. Uh, the, these, are, these are really important. So, uh, so I, I, it's not just about being consistent with music, it's being very clear about the direction you want to take. Sorry, Caroline, you wanted to make a point there? I just say, uh, I mean, he's an expert in popular culture, yeah. which is what um, we feel Lexus were trying to trying to connect to yeah. um, and, and he's but the, the, the Lexus mashup was fascinating wasn't it in terms of just how many times it's been name checked so uh, but but Dave I understand the ballerina the music for the ballerina ad was procured and composed and created for that campaign is that correct it wasn't a sync as it were in the classic procured existing yeah. commercial um, music yeah it was a custom track it was a bespoke <coughs> track um, again that we worked on and as Malcolm had a very good point we wanted to do something exciting edgy, dynamic, but still had the premium brand values. So, you know, we went with the trap hip-hop genre, which wasn't an obvious genre for that commercial by any chance. And then there's various campaigns we've done over the years that are in the similar kind of strategy. So I think that because we've done this over the last two years, it, Lexus had a right to talk about music in this way. They had a right to say, we're doing this with Will I Am. It wasn't just a badging exercise and a sort of random person they selected. But given that that had worked so well, wasn't it tempted to do the same again, to create something bespoke? I mean, what, what shifted the needle to say, look, we have to work with a third party here? In terms of the NX campaign? Yeah. Um, well, we did create something bespoke. That was what was amazing about it. And like, you know, to launch a campaign on the back of a technology art exhibition at the Barbican, take a track that was created for that exhibition, remix it for our ad, and have it available as Shazam-enabled content. I think that was quite an interesting. It wasn't just you know, a piece of music in that sense. Malcolm, we saw some pretty impressive stats in terms of ROI, which I know in case studies, everyone's really focused now, particularly in these kind of campaigns. But what do you think were the 
concrete wins for those stakeholders involved. I mean, uh, you, you, bit beyond you know the sort of the, the standard kind of likes and uh, you know social buzz, as it were. Well, I, I think for all uh, marketeers and uh, marketing agencies, uh, we're kind of in very uncharted waters, really, aren't we? Because you, you used to be able to take a media budget and know X amount was going to go on a big TV campaign and X amount was going to go on posters and press. And you had a pretty good idea if you hit a certain share of, mar uh, share of voice on the medium, what sort of return you would get. And... Uh, you know, and, and you wouldn't have been far out provided you had some work that was on brief. These days, the, the proliferation of media, the importance of actually consumers getting behind it in, in social media, uh, actually you, you find yourself having to model things very, very different. And you're not, you're not actually sure uh, how accurate your modeling is going to be. So there's, there's a Part of it is actually just having faith that all the thinking and all the strategy and the creative breakthroughs are, are going to have the desired effect. And then working with your media partners to make sure that they are maximizing those channels in the way you can. Because I think uh, there's, there's a lot of people assume viral uh, content is pure viral, but actually you need to seed it first. You need to s make sure you get behind it properly. You need to make sure you share it with influencers who are going to share it. So when I was talking about having lots of stakeholders earlier, it's really important uh, that there's stakeholders in media, in creative, in, in, all, in all the areas to make sure that you build all these things up from the bottom up. So. Uh, so you do have maximum effect. So we had a pretty good idea what we needed to achieve, but then you're kind of handing it over to the consumer to share it and see if you get exponential results. And uh, thankfully, that's exactly what we did get. Chris, I mean, again, back to the slide. I mean, there's some pretty impressive stats. The one about 70% first-time visitors yep. was pretty darn impressive. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, we were aiming at a new customer for this car, younger, more aspirational, because it was in a segment um, that we weren't previously competing, um, a more accessible segment as well to the premium market. So um, that was, you know, the whole construct of the campaign was designed to attract that customer. Um, and yeah, it's a great stat to do. So on our website, 70% of the traffic was first time visits to the, the Lexus website um, during the heart of the campaign, which was, which was a great stat. And so, um, yeah, that in itself showed that it had attracted the attention and that, you know, was resonating, if you like, with these people. But with regard to your, how should we say, target market in terms of people that would buy the NX, as it were, how important is digital as a channel for them? The, 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 the view would be normally that that would be classic above-the-line telly as we would say in, in, in the UK, would be your classic customer. But I, I mean, no. As I, as I said, we're sort of an exclusive player in the market. We don't enjoy the market share, obviously, of the... I mean, the Audi, BMW, Mercedes command 75% of the premium market in Europe together between the three of them. Um, they have significantly more media budgets than ourselves. So what our strategy is, is obviously we've got to leverage our... Um, investment in the right way to get the maximum ROI and digital is clearly the place to do that. So a large part of um, our media plan is digital focus. But then you've got to be smart about digital and how you do it um, as well. So, you know, to take on Malcolm's point, you know, adopt influences, you know, get their um, social followings involved. And, and we did this. There were other elements of this campaign. We did media partnerships, for example, with Vice, um, and so, again, other areas to attract that audience, that's what you need to do. Um, but digital clearly is, is critical. But you have to do the television as well, because that's the medium that does get the reach. But it's doing it smartly as well, and you know, making sure that it's really um, optimized in the best possible way. Caroline, I want to talk about Will. We're, this is a music conference, and many of the people in the audience are involved in artists. Um, I'm not sure that Will needs more profile. He's a fixture on Saturday night. He's involved in a number of projects. He's seen as an entrepreneur and an innovator. But that's, that's only in the UK. So we're talking Europe. This is obviously a pan-European, including absolutely. Russia. Absolutely. Would love you to expand more 
for people to say, look, what, what's in it for Will to be involved in a campaign as, uh, as deep and integrated as this? There, there, there's many things. Um, it's it, when, when also you're in a peer group, which is doing the, doing the same, um, it, it's very important. It's, uh, it's also reaching those other territories within Europe. Yes, he has got a great profile in the UK, but in France, in Spain, in Germany, you know, as we said, this campaign, you know, reached all those levels. And also there's potential of it rolling out internationally into other territories. So that is also a very, you know, exciting, exciting part. Um, the brand, as I said before, he just loves. That was an obvious one. Um, and also, being able to expand his creativity within the campaign, or you know, also what I touched on, but also a platform for a lot of elements that he's in, involved in himself as a brand. So, the kind of subtle details, like the fact that his pulse wristband is pretty much in every single piece of content created, whether it's in the TV ad or whether it's actually in the poster and the content. In the yeah, the in interactive. Sorry, Malcolm, I don't think they got that. But, uh, no. There's a there's a part in the in the content where he's he's actually pressing the wristband in order to start the music in the car. Um, he's he's actually wearing his own wearable collection, his wearable tech collection, again in every single image within the campaign. And then of course there's his music and his graphics. So it's it's fully layered for him. It's 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 really been a platform for him to express himself in many levels. And, and were, was this an opportunity for his label as well with regard to broadening his reach in those territories, in those wider territories? I mean, we're his agents as opposed to his label. Um, so, you know, the music, he obviously had to get the, the, the usage rights and the sync rights throughout every territory. So, you know, yes, there is that element as well. Um, but this, this much more came from, from him as an individual and him trying to expand his own brand in, across Europe. Malcolm, uh, would be good for your name as, as, as the conductor of this orchestra, as it were, for your view as to whether or not you think this depth of collaboration could be a, a benchmark for, for how this kind of collaboration could be done going forward? Well, I would... Is this one working? Yeah. I would certainly say that the idea of not just taking a celebrity and popping them in an ad and expecting that to get the results or even the credibility. I, I, I mean, that's quite an old model. I'm, I'm, you know, it's working very well for Nespresso uh, with, with uh, Mr. Clooney, but uh, you know, I, I think that, that model is gonna be very, uh, it's gonna be worn out very, very quickly. And particularly if you've got brands that uh, really want to change people's perception, uh, I, I think that lacks quite a lot of credibility. So as, as a marketing company, we would always endorse, if you're going to involve uh, talent, to make sure they're part of the creative process. So, it's, so it adds to the credibility of the project and allows us to do many more things with it uh, because that suddenly it's a, it's a richer piece and, uh, and, and consumers can engage in it and believe in what you've done. Uh, whether exactly what we did with Will becomes a benchmark, I, I'd hope to think that uh, different brands with different collaborators will come up with new and innovative things all the time because the, the thing about this case study for me is uh, we had a perfect brand and a perfect collaborator and did really interesting stuff that hasn't been done before but you know, it, it, it's because it hasn't been done before. So the next one has to be new things that haven't been done before. But collaboration is the key. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw it open to questions in a moment or two. So I'm happy if you can sort of ready some questions in the uh, as well. And I think we have a roving mic, actually. So we have a gentleman at the front in black. Thanks. Hey, guys. Uh, hello. My name's Phil uh, from Apollo Studios. Uh, I'm very, very familiar with uh, music and brands and collaboration and that sort of stuff. Ob obviously, you guys are too. I'm sure some people in the crowd here are too. I'm curious about the, uh, the actual music production aspects of this because typically when working uh, like music houses or composers, artists working with brands, there's a certain workflow we're accustomed to but this is sort of an exception case in you're dealing with a star, you're dealing with a, a, uh, 
uh, all sorts of, uh, of uh, interest on both parts. It's much more a collaborative process than just an agency hiring a supplier and trying to find the best music. So I'm sure your process in the agency and with you guys was somewhat a bit different from what you're accustomed to. So I'm curious to hear how did it go? Like, did you ask Will I am to submit 25 different demos? <laughs> I'm sure it was not the case, but did it change the way you guys dealt with the whole music production process? Thank you, excellent question. We'll start with Dave and then to any of the other panel members that want to chip in. Now that is a very good question, pertinent question. And I think that um, flexibility, flexibility is the key word here. And um, Lexus Europe and their above the line agency, CHI, were very flexible when working with Will. So timelines can stretch when you're working with a talent of that nature, obviously. Um, but not to re-stress what's already been stressed, but Will Am is an amazing artist and he's, he's very you know, talented in all the different areas we needed. And music is obviously the day to day for him. It's what where he excels as well as tech and you know, fashion. So working with someone that's musically as astute as Will can respond to briefs like he can um, was fairly easy, I'd say. Um, but again, it was more the flexibility of the agency to kind of work within his timelines because he's a busy guy. And he's got a lot of, you know, he's got a lot of bows in his arrow, he's got a lot of things going on. Um, and so we have to respect that and we have to kind of work with him on that. Thank you. I'd, I'd also say, we use the word collaboration a lot, but when you are collaborating with someone who's an expert in a particular area, I think there's a point at which you have to behave in a very different way. As an agency, you're absolutely right. I think the creators are very used to procuring music, as, as you said, and directing it and having very strong views. No, we don't want it that way, we want it this way. But when you're collaborating with someone who's clearly much more talented in that space than any of the creatives in any agency. Uh, you, you have to be very open-minded and, and if Will says this is the way it's going to be, you have to embrace that, to be honest. I mean, there were certain stipulations in the sense that it had to, it had to have the right uh, BPM to fit with the film, but beyond that, we had to be very open-minded and we didn't get 20 demos. <laughs> 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 Next question, please. If you could say where you're from as well, that'd be helpful. Can we try the other mic, please. Uh, oh. Okay, now it's not now it's working. So my name is Anna Laskowska. I am managing director of Sony ATV Poland. So uh, and I am responsible for Eastern Europe. So first of all, congr first of all, congratulations. Uh, for the fantastic car uh, from this pr uh, and for this cooperation with Will I Am, and I must say, I have one of the first uh, examples of Lexus in Poland. So, <laughs> the new NX. This is the company car. So, once again, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I didn't surprise. I am a little bit surprised because I didn't imagine and I, that I will come here and uh, and this we will be talking about this. Uh, so my question is about the um, if there were any um, problems with communication in such a meaning of the understanding of words. I mean, what was for the musician dynamic? What was for the musician uh, angles? And what was if did you found some problems in understanding musical understanding of these words? and what you wanted to achieve. This is interesting because I know from my composers that from time to time it's really crucial understanding the words. So how did you, Kathy probably, Caroline, sorry, how you uh, explained what is expected from the, from the writer because here he's a musician and writer, he had to compose this music. So this is interesting for me. And later on, after, I will share some idea because I felt inspired by you. Okay, so translating the brief and turning it into a reality. Uh, one for Dave and, and Caroline, I think. But uh... Yeah, I mean, just kind of almost kind of going back one step within the deal, um, kind of Dave is here representing um, kind of Lexus within the deal and, and I was representing Will within the deal. So it's very much a relationship also between Dave and myself. Um, there's a lot of trust between us, all very much from the beginning, which was which was invaluable. Um, but it's 
I've kind of grown up in the music industry for the last 20 years. You know how to relate to artists. With, after having kind of eight to nine years working within this brand space, you know where the push and pull is going to be. And you know, you know, hopefully if you're using people like myself and Dave, we know how to juggle that. Um, we know what the artist needs to hear and we know what the brand needs to hear. It, they're all case by case. Um, all the situations are different. It was, this was a bit of a dream one because Will got it. He didn't need convincing. It was, it was the, la he spoke that language already. So in a way we didn't have to, we didn't have to kind of do kind of footsteps around him or it was, he got it. No, I think your question is a very good one and it's a usual issue that comes up in these yeah. deals. But like Caroline said, from the very first meeting, he was just on the same page stylistically and musically. So there wasn't as much interpretation of briefs and sort of hand holding and talking through various different forms that you usually would with a talent on a deal. It was just that instant kind of connection. Um, time for one final question from the floor before I... <coughs> Matt. Hi there. Um, my question is, when you guys set out with the marketing objectives for Lexus, did you approach it from the angle that you needed um, music sync for adverts, or did you approach it as an influencer-led talent campaign? Um, Hello? No, basically, music was, as, as I mentioned in my presentation, clearly something that was going to be really important, but we wanted to take that to the next level. And so what we decided was, okay, um, how can we do that? I, we engage in, in a talent collaboration with a, an iconic artist. So we would be able to have the music deal as well, and that was gonna be a, obviously a fundamental pillar within the overall campaign, um, but much more build on that as well. Um, and that's how, that's how we basically approached it. So it was almost taking the, the fact that we were gonna use music, how we're going to amplify that with a star, global superstar, um, an icon, and basically let, then take that relationship beyond the music. And that was the approach. I, th I, think, I think our intention, though, was that you shouldn't necessarily be able to pull the constituent parts apart. It was, it was really a sum of the parts. It was a whole, you know, the, the striking angles of the car, will the music it's the whole thing we've created and you know you turn the volume up in in different spaces because certain influencers want to are interested in different aspects of it but it is the sum of the parts in this case and i i, I so it wasn't about one thing or the other it was the total great thank you thank you for those fantastic questions um chris you alluded at the end you teased to something very exciting coming next <laughs> on the assumption you can't tell us any, uh, everything, are you able to tell us anything about what's happening in the next day? Um, well, we are looking at producing a very spectacular um, film content piece starring Will um, and the car, obviously, the <laughs> NX, yes. In fact, it's cars in this case as well. Um, which Essentially, yes, it's going to be very dynamic, um, very high-tech, very spectacular, and you know, hopefully it should really en engage with people. Um, yeah, and we are, you know, in the true Lexus way, when we do something, we, we do it properly, otherwise we won't do it. And so, you know, again, this is something in the relationship, what we've done is we've talked to Will about this project, um, had a couple of ideas from him in it as well. Um, so again, he's contributing to the process. Um, and he's excited about it as well because, yeah, it's gonna, it will get attention. So yeah. a great piece of film content that will be coming out in, within a couple of months' time. I mean, it's quite alarmingly rare, isn't it, Dave, for there to be a part two of a campaign like this, isn't there? Um, yes, yes and no, yes, on a sort of fundamental music and talent deal level, but again, not to repeat what we've been saying, this was something slightly bit different, and it was a truly integrated collaboration, and, and this piece of content organically just grew out of the relationship, and I just want to say that it's very exciting, and it's going to be a game changer, definitely. 
Well, look, on that note, it only behoves me to say thank you very much indeed to Chris, to Caroline, to Malcolm, and to Dave for this presentation. Thank you for your great questions and your attention. And over to the next session. Thank you. Thank you.